Welcome back to Roy and Rescue. We've had this horrible situation happen in Boston with the explosions. Um, and in other episodes, I've had questions come in regarding the use of tourniquets and when are they practical, when are they not practical. And in the past, I've actually um, explained that tourniquets really aren't utilized a lot in ordinary lay rescue, public rescue. In fact, the national standards really don't even talk about tourniquets per se because we're able to control it usually with direct pressure. Now, one thing that's majorly different than that though is the use of tourniquets during traumatic injuries with um, either slow response, um, they are way out in the field and there's gonna be a long time to transport and the bleeding is, is lethal, um, it's hemorrhaging, and then overarching that is combat medicine, where we have these types of injuries that are not the same as what we see normally in civilian life. In civilian life, we see cuts, lacerations, tears, um, you know, bone fractures that create lacerations, pinching, um, that kind of stuff, industrial related, traumatic from car accidents. Um, and, and though you might find from time to time a reason to use a tourniquet, um, primarily that's, it's not needed that much. Um, it's not that it would be wrong to use one, it's just that it's not needed that often. You take the case of the Boston Marathon though where we've had um, explosions in close proximity and what we have is the similarity between actually that bomb acting much like an anti-personnel mortar in combat situations or even like a, a makeshift roadside bomb. Um, in the case of Boston, these things were filled with, with um, ball bearings, it looks like, and possibly nails and shrapnel. And especially at close proximity, you know, that stuff comes out and, and it's grouped together. It, it creates this horrible injury that's tearing, shredding, amputating, and because of that jagged type of, of blast, ballistic type of, of injury, you have massive amounts of bleeding, major trauma associated with shrapnel that has ripped, torn, and in, in, in many cases, especially closer to the bomb explosion, you have those amputations. Tourniquets would definitely be called for, especially do, during the fact that it's a mass casualty incident, and secondly, um, because of resources being taxed so much, when you have 173 different patients, several dead on scene, um, the chaos slows things down, unfortunately, and so we have an extended amount of time to deliver the patient to a receiving hospital for that type of um, reconstructive surgery and traumatic surgery. Anything that can be used to create a loop just above the injury site, a belt, shreds of a shirt, cord ties out of a hoodie, uh, cable from extension cords. There's a number of things that can be used. Anything that can be wrapped around the limb and have something put inside of it, even if it's just a double knot, but anything especially that if you could put a stick, a bar, um, a pen, and, and then tie that pen into there so it makes a crank and we simply make rotations of that crank until we see that the bleeding has stopped. At that point, you can secure the ends of that, make another couple knots, um, and then monitor the patient for other problems. If they're going into cardiac arrest, we may need to start CPR. If the patient seems to be in shock, you know, shock treatment has been debated now for some time, but I would be laying them down, elevating legs if they have legs, um, elevating the non-affected leg. Um, of course, if they have back injuries, we don't want to aggravate that injury, but if they die from shock, it isn't going to matter if they have a back injury. So, you know, my heart and our prayers go out to all the victims and the families of the victims of this bombing. 
but I thought it was important that we talk a little bit about one of the major things that was discussed in the newspapers, and that was the use of tourniquets and how they saved the lives of these victims due to the fast action of many volunteers that got right in there. And, and bravo to them. I mean, fantastic that people got involved. Instead of running, oh, everybody running away, you had a ton of volunteers running towards the bombs that had exploded and helping to try to save as many lives as possible. So I, I hope this helps. I can certainly clarify and, and demonstrate a little bit more. And in fact, maybe this has a follow-up on actual application of a tourniquet the proper way and when to use it, when not to use it. But keep on rescuing. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.